That's right, folks. It's Dune time. We are finally going to talk about Dune today. Um, it has been a long time uh, trying to figure out how to talk about this book. So for this video, I've tried to make it a couple of times. I just want to chat about some things that I think are interesting in the book. I'm not going to like give you a synopsis. I'm not really going to give you like a review of the themes of Dune. I'm just wanting to talk about one of the books that, you know, it's science fiction's masterpiece, right? Supposedly. So just want to chat and give my thoughts on part one of Dune. So like full, you know, disclosure on Dune. I'm like, my chair is rotating. Stop it. I love the book. Okay. Like from a quick review point of view, I really love the book. I think it's interesting. I like the political aspect. I like the prophecy, you know, Ben Gesserit magic, you know, type of stuff. I really love, obviously, the science fiction aspect. I mean, that's why I picked it up in the first place. And I really love everything about, like, the Fremen culture, their, the design of the still suits, their religion, the, the way that the planet, like, looks and feels. I think, like, the the basic, like, big fundamental bones of the book I really, really love. All of those pieces are great. I don't so much love the characters sometimes, and not because they're unlikable. I truly believe, and I heard this from John Green once, that characters should not always be likable to be good characters. Like, just because you like a character or relate to them doesn't make them a good character, you know, or like a well-written character. So it's not that I don't like Paul or the Duke, Leto, or the Baron, or whatever. Sometimes, and I think this is a flaw with almost every character in the book, um, at least the way that they're written, is that characters will inner monologue um, exposition to the reader. So for example, um, at the end of part one, Paul and his mom are mother. Mom just sounds like weirdly modern to be using uh, in reference to Dune. So I'll say mother because that's much better. Paul and his mother are, you know, stuck out in, uh, after the shield wall, they're like stuck in the desert and they're alone. And then Paul has that whole like uh, waking vision deal. Paul and his mother are going back and forth and Paul will say something and he then will, in italics, he'll be thinking like, I don't understand why she's not getting this. Man, she's so slow. And like some of the the, the, I think the main flow of conversation is interrupted really frequently by characters having that inner monologue slash exposition moment with the, with the audience or the reader. And honestly, I find it really annoying. I think it was really apparent um, during the dinner party scene thing that happens that's also not in the, in the movie where characters are speaking and having like political intrigue that then like some characters are having thoughts and like it just the way that it is written it comes across what's the word for it it comes across unnecessarily pretentious that's it and honestly unnecessary like I think it unnecessarily complicates conversation the second thing I wanted to talk about I just totally forgot <laughs> oh right so Paul is like 15 in this book he even before like the awakening of his mind at the end of part one or book one, he is a surprisingly chill, like very, very chill, an extremely mature 15 year old. Now, I understand he is the Duke's son. They're going, you know, he's been trained in being like a Zen, you know, keep your emotions to yourself and you always have to be projecting like a royal and composed state. But I will say like for a 15 year old, he's a little not believable to me at all. I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books that are aimed at young adults. I read a lot of books that are that have younger characters in them. And I just, Paul doesn't have an element of what it feels like to be 15 at all to me. And I find that really kind of like unbelievable. I think he should either be aged up or have some sort of recklessness or being wrong. Like, for example, during that dinner party scene, um, the Duke leaves at a particular point and Paul, and he asks Paul to take over as host. And I just, 
Paul starts this banter with a character, it doesn't really matter, and like Paul will, will have like the perfect chess move thing to say back and forth, and and like he comes across like aggressive and like older, like way older than a 15 year old. And I just like, maybe give some of that writing or some of that conversation to Lady Jessica, who is such a powerful character, obviously, because she's a Ben Jesuit and she's, trained her son and she has all these she has the voice and, and all this cool cool stuff and I feel like around other people her character is kind of diminished and not as powerful as she is like she's much more experienced with, with these like dinner party political intrigue situations like why is Paul having that role I don't know I just it didn't gel with me very well characters will react to what he says in that inner monologue italicized way where they're like, oh my god, like, he is he is the one, and he is so cool, and he is so composed, and he he said the exact right thing in the exact right way. It seems like he really never truly messes up in any situation, at least in book one. But in the first part, it seems like he never really makes any mistakes anytime he says anything. And if he ever does, it's just like because he was a little too smart, you know? And that just, that bugs me. I, I just, it's not very believable. I understand he's like, he's a character to propel the plot of like the, the uh, Moadib and the Kwisat Chatterak, all that stuff, but I still think fundamentally your character should be human when they are, oh well, arguably human, right? I was watching a review of the movie by uh, Red Letter Media. Um, they do lots of movie related content here on YouTube and it's really good. You should watch it if you don't already. Um, they talked about Dune, the movie. I can't remember who actually said it on the show, but somebody said how Paul is the prophet, and that's like a trope. But that Paul, but like that this book makes fun of or flips that on its head because Paul isn't really the prophet because the Ben Gesserit laid all this groundwork that's essentially like false to make him seem like a prophet. So like basically they created like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? But and that he's like not truly a prophet. And I think later books he like goes on to do like destructive things and like the, the friend and hate him or something. I don't know, I haven't actually read the, the rest of them. But what I wanted to say about that is what is a prophet except for someone that other people have said stories about and laid the groundwork for them to fulfill and like check all those prophet boxes. Like what else is a prophet or someone who is prophetically pronounced, you know? That's just like a weird detail that I wanted to point out. I will note that the book is hard to read. I think it is much less excessively written than a lot of other like popular sci-fi fantasy. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but I do think um, just like from a small inside, I've talked to a couple of people who have attempted this book and they just get stuck usually after book one or so at some point in book one. And to be totally honest, I attempted this book for the first time in like 2011. Couldn't get, I got straight through book one and then I just like stopped when, when Lady Jessica and Paul are like starting the, the Fremen journey essentially. And I was just like, nope, I don't care. I'm bored, I don't understand. <laughs> I attempted it another time a couple years later, got to the exact same point and quit. And then um, probably over a year and a half ago, I finally read it from <laughs> start to finish and something about it, it just flowed. Like, it just beautifully flowed for me. I loved it. Um, I had a great time reading it. I didn't really struggle to read it. I am now reading it again, specifically to make um, these videos, the part one, part two, maybe even a part three, like of a Dune discussion slash review. And I, I'm noticing again that like, the writing is of a different, um, I, I don't wanna say a different era, but it, it is of a different time of science fiction, I think. Like if you're if you're talking about like the expanse or the leviathan wakes like that whole series that's written in an extremely accessible way it's very conversational very easy to follow flashy um this with the philosophy the po the politics the um d this the, the slow burn journey i think is much more difficult to get into i think my best advice would be if you really want to read it you know i think you should take it a little bit at a time um, don't force yourself to get through huge chunks at one time, um, but to keep consistently trying because I do think at, at a certain point the book will kind of click for you and it just becomes this 
beautiful thing. I think some of the writing in here is like almost poetic. Frank Herbert, like, I mean, he knew what he was doing. So this was written in 1965. It's obviously gonna read differently than something written today, um, but it's definitely worth it. I think you should read it. I think you should, if you're a fan of the movie, I think you should at least try it, um, especially since you're gonna get more material in the first book and probably definitely in the second, because considering how the first book is much smaller than the second. I've been talking for 12 minutes about Dune. I'm not even really sure what I said. Yeah, so that's how I feel about that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was um, <laughs> somewhat worth watching because again, this was not a traditional review. I'm just sort of spouting some thoughts about a book that I like, which is essentially what I do on this channel. So I hope you guys have a great days, great weeks, great months, great 2022. And I will be filming part two as I complete the book for the fourth time slash second time slash maybe third time. All right, that's everything I got, I guess. <laughs> Bye.